Hello everybody, I'm Shmuel Gershon from the Testing Thought uh, web blog. Uh, you can find it at testing.gershon.info and that's how it looked like. And uh, in this video I want to talk about connecting and interacting with web services. Not long ago a question appeared about web services and applications at a Brazilian mailing list uh, called DF Testers. Uh, and uh, I thought it may be nice to have a video in place to show a demonstration. This video is in English because I we want to share it as a guest blog at the Eurostar uh, conference blog, which uh, you can see now in your screen. So, what's a web service? A web service is an is an interface to, like the name says, uh, a service or value provided over the internet. We could argue that any web page is a web service, and at first we wouldn't be completely wrong, but. We reserve this name web service for programmatic interface or interoperable machine to machine interactions that the W3C committee defines. And anyway, we won't enter in many details because all these details about web services on the technical side are explained at uh, Wikipedia or many other uh, places. And uh, so, what the basic that we need to know is that uh, to connect to a web service and exercise it uh, is that every service has a data format so because web services are made for machine to machine interaction like we said so the two computers need a very detailed definition of the language they will share uh, otherwise they will not understand each other so and this language will define how the requests will be asked and how the responses will be answered uh, you can find these definitions on a, a file called uh, WSDL, the Web Service Description Language, and uh, it will be useful for us in our manual communication with the web services as well in a minute. So how do you connect to a web service? Uh, when we said that the web service is a value provided over the internet, we mean that the protocols used are based in normal simple web protocols. So the very same HTTP protocol you use to access my blog or Google, so web services will use the same HTTP protocol and send their formatted information over it. So w the other, the only thing you need in order to connect to a web service is a file that will explain you where this web service is and what's the format of the language. So where do you find such a file? This is a very important point and it's the reason I decided to make this video instead of pointing to one of the many other videos about SOAP UI that you'll see in YouTube. And that's because uh, all these videos, they are they uh, ha use either uh, local host services or services that you can't access or services that are paid. And because that's what happens in most of the videos, uh, there are thousands of, of web services out there, but many of them, they are not free. And most of them require registration. That's free, but that's that's annoying. And there are very few services that are free and public, and that's what we will use here. So that's cool. You'll be able to exercise the web service together with me in the demo. So that is very good. So let's go. And you need a, a software called SOAP UI. You can download it on the website that you see on your screen, www.soapui.org. And it's free and it's simple. Uh, you can Pause this video, go and, un and download it. I'll be waiting for you here when you come back. So let's wait. Great, welcome back. To find a web service, you can go to one uh, a listing of web services in the internet. There's one I like that uh, appears on programmableweb.com uh, slash API slash directory uh, that it has a long list of diverse services. Or you can look at xmlme.com that has a small list of free ones. I placed the I, I picked one from XMLME called Shakespeare. And we choose it because it's both free and it's uh, very simple and easy to use. Okay. So let's look at the WSDL file of Shakespeare service to look what it does and what it looks like. Uh, point your browser to this address www.xmlme.com slash wsshakespeare.asmx interrogation mark wsdl uh, it's all in one line and directly you'll see a 
file like this. So you see it's a file in XML and and it has uh, many information of how the the conversation should be done by the computers and it's got a description at the end. Let's see what it does. This web service takes a phrase from the plays of William Shakespeare and returns the associated speech, speaker and play. So it's like Google but for Shakespeare text. That's it. Now uh, it will make you look smart with your friends, right? And uh, so to use the web service you just have to give this uh, file to the application that I just downloaded. So copy the address that you just wrote here and open SOAP UI. In SOAP UI you can choose a new SOAP UI project where I'm clicking here and provide the file. SOAP UI will connect to it directly and you, as you can see it found that it's got some requests and it will allow us to use the request and send a response. So there's just one parameter here probably where we write the uh, the phrase that was written in the description, right? So let's write here something and see how it works or if the service is online at all. So let's write here software testing. Uh, speech not found. So uh, we know that the service is online, that's great, but we also know that Shakespeare did not write even a word about software testing. That's surprising. So, but we know one thing. So, let's see if the service works for Shakespeare thing that uh, we can use a quote by Shakespeare. So, if you write here something that Shakespeare is known for reading, like King known for a, for a horse, right? I, in some play it was written. Oh, suddenly we do receive information. It was said. In, in King Richard III by the King Richard itself and he said this beautiful phrase uh, that ends with a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. So we know that the service is online, we know we find quotes, it's cool. The, the service, as I said, will now make us very smart. Uh, let's explore a bit more. What else Shakespeare said? Uh, he said, uh, to be or not, to be, right? What? Apparently not. It says speech not found. How can it be? Uh, so actually I know the answer. How can it be? That's because this web service will, no feel, will not feel punctuation for you and that's what I just discovered. So Shakespeare wrote this phrase with a comma here. That's to be. Pause. Or maybe not to be. And if you write it like this, suddenly we've discovered that it was, Ham it was in the play Hamlet and Hamlet himself said that. And so that's the third thing that we discovered in uh, our exploration about the web service, that it will, it, it, it is online and it finds quotes, but it requires punctuation to be given. It will not fill the punctuation up for you. Uh, we're doing our manual tells and we can explore a little bit more. So let's see what else we can do. Hmm. Let's try an empty input. So we don't give anything and we ask for play. And it says, ah, there's a shorter minimum requirement. So we know the service is online, it lacks of quote with punctuation, and it has a minimum length for the input. Uh, which should be this minimum length? Uh, it doesn't say, so that's a bug in the error message, I think, maybe. Uh, we can press here validate, and uh, SOAP UI will tell us if it uh, is according to the WSDL schema. Uh, it says it's okay, so they also did not provide the min length restriction on the WSDL file. Th they could have, so maybe that's another bug. Uh, so we will have to try it uh, in order to discover what's the minimum length. So maybe it's just not being empty or not, maybe. So 5 is okay, but what about we are doing a binary search and hmm, maybe 4. So okay, no, it's 5. So we need at least five uh, letters in order to be a valid input. So that's another information we add to the list. Um, what else? We can try one word that Shakespeare repeats a lot of times. Uh, I looked up some quotes and I discovered that uh, bless in many forms appears in uh, many places. So let's see what we receive. And we receive just, we receive if you see one speech result and not the other ones. Uh, 
so apparently the service will bring just the first finding only and not like we are used with search engines, engines that will show one after the other so is that enough or is that a bug? I don't know, we don't know uh, because we're not the people that assess the value of uh, this demo web service but it's certainly a good piece of information so uh, the recording application is telling that we are up to many minutes so I have to close the video the plan next is to show how to make SOAP UI look automatically uh, for example for all the quotes that you can see in the service documentation it has examples so how do you automate SOAP UI uh, it uses a scripting interface a scripting language called Groovy so w would that be of interest maybe yes uh, please let me know if you'd be interested in that in a comment on the blog post where you found this video and probably on the Eurostar web blog and I'll be writing then I'll be posting a follow-up video uh, with that information or uh, maybe in my own blog testing thought and testing and I am Shmuel Gershon and I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, this simple demonstration of interacting manually with web services thank you and have a happy testing